What are your thoughts on this passage from Gary Taubes, the author of The Case for Keto? When I started reporting on this subject as a journalist 20 years ago, virtually no meaningful research had been published to test the claims of the diet book doctors, most famously Robert Atkins, who advocated this way of eating. Since then, carbohydrate-restricted diets, keto or otherwise, may have become the most tested diets in history. The website clinicaltrials.gov reports more than 100 clinical trials of ketogenic diets in progress and nearly 90 completed. The findings are consistent. Ketogenic eating is safe and effective at controlling both weight and blood sugar. Pick a disease from Alzheimer's and anxiety disorders to traumatic, traumatic brain injury and tumors, and researchers somewhere are probably testing whether eating a ketogenic diet improves its prognosis. In 2019, the American Diabetes Association concluded that low carbohydrate and very low carbohydrate diets, that is keto, were the only dietary therapies that consistently resulted in beneficial outcomes for adults with diabetes or prediabetes. In 2017, more than 100 Canadian physicians co-signed a letter to Huffington Post declaring that they personally follow keto-like regimens and now counsel their patients to do so too. What we see in our clinics, these physicians wrote, is that blood sugar values go down, blood pressure drops, chronic pain decreases or disappears, lipid profiles improve, inflammatory markers improve, energy increases, weight decreases, sleep is improved, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, symptoms are lessened, etc. Medication is adjusted downward or even eliminated, which reduces the side effects for patients and the cost to society. The results we achieve with our patients are impressive and durable. So again, what are your thoughts on that passage from Gary Taubes? That, that's your kind of ridiculous because what you do is you select oh, those 100 doctors. What about the other 100,000 physicians who would be perhaps totally in disagreement with that? And what, what you read me is just a lot of uh, anecdotal material. There's no solid studies that were there whatsoever. When you think about uh, uh, the studies of Neil Barnard, who took, again, he was, Gary Taubes was mentioning the American Diabetic Association. Neil Barnard took the American Diabetic Association diet, compared it with whole food plant-based nutrition and a number of patients who were diabetic. There's no contest. They were blown out of the, the American Diabetic Association was blown away. And there's something a little bit nerve, makes us nervous about the American Diabetic Association because when they were, uh, uh, question uh, in conspiracy of their relationship uh, to uh, meat and animal industry, uh, the interview was halted. They refused to answer their relationship to the meat industry. So a little bit like some of these other organizations, which really uh, are existing for their, for their own benefit, let's say. Yeah. All right. I think we've, uh, we've had enough of Gary Tabs. Mm -hmm. You have said that we can make ourselves heart attack proof. What is the basis for you making this claim? Well, again, uh, what was, it was started, by it's, what, it's based upon two studies that I've done. Uh, the first one was a small study was uh, 18 patients who were seriously ill with cardiovascular disease. They had failed their first or second bypass. They had failed their first or second angioplasty. They were too sick for these procedures or they had refused. And then my late brother-in-law used to refer to these as Dr. Esselstyn's walking dead. Uh, but they complied with whole food plant-based nutrition. <clears throat> Not only did we halt their disease, but there was significant evidence of disease reversal. This was confirmed by angiograms. It was confirmed by pulse volume. It was confirmed by PET scans. So we, uh, uh, we found that what seems to happen is <clears throat> the plaques that these people have, have a cap, all right? This is, and how most heart attacks will occur is when you're eating the Western diet 
And eventually in this cascade of oxidation, you begin to form enough foam cells and the foam cells uh, secrete these nasty metalloproteinases, stromelicin, elastase, collagenase, myeloproxidase. What the metalloproteinases do that is so bad, they erode the cap over your plaque, right? It gets so thin that the sheer force of blood racing over that cap tears it. Now you have the seminal moment in heart disease. You have ruptured your plaque. So now the, the contents of the plaque begin to extravasate out into the flowing blood where they activate our clotting factors like platelets. In a matter of minutes after you've ruptured your plaque, you now begin to form a clot. And the clot is in and of itself self-propagating. So in a matter of further minutes, now suddenly the clot is totally occluding, blocking the artery and all the downstream heart muscle starts to die. That is a heart attack. So how do you keep that from occurring? This entire cascade of events that leads to the formation of plaque is interrupted when you're eating whole food plant-based nutrition. You don't weaken the cap over your plaque. You actually strengthen the cap over your plaque or you eliminate it entirely. And that way, if you cannot rupture the cap over your plaque, you have now made yourself heart attack proof. Where do you stand in terms of fat? Uh, many respected authors and doctors recommend whole food plant-based fats such as avocados, raw seeds, raw nuts, and olives. What do you think? Yeah, I, if you look at page 69 of my book, patients who do not have heart disease, I have no problem with their not eating nuts and nuts and seeds. If patients do have heart disease, I like them to have on the, perhaps a tablespoon or two of chia seeds or of flaxseed meal, uh, lots of green leafy vegetables. Uh, <clears throat> because by getting rid of the saturated fat, I mean, I'm a little fussy in patients who already have heart disease. They've had a heart attack, what have you. And uh, the idea of their continuing to eat an excess of saturated fat, our diet is by no means fat-free. There's going to be plenty of, uh, I should, let me mention for a minute, what are the foods that we recommend? We recommend all these marvelous whole grains for your cereal, bread, pasta, rolls, and bagels. 101 different types of uh, legumes, lentils, and beans. All these marvelous red, yellow, and green leafy vegetables, white potatoes, sweet potatoes, and some fruit. And there are hundreds of wonderful recipes in multiple books by authors who are plant-based as to how they eat that and safely. But what are you getting with that? You're getting <clears throat> all your essential fatty acids. You're getting omega-6 and you're getting omega-3. But when we talk about, if you add now, the, what are the foods that injure the endothelium? Because here's an area where all experts would agree. Where atherosclerosis or heart disease has its inception, its onset, its beginning, is when we progressively injure the life jacket and the guardian of our blood vessels, which is that delicate innermost lining, the endothelium. All right? Why is that dangerous? Because the endothelium manufactures that absolutely magic molecule of gas, nitric oxide, which is the salvation and the protection of all of our blood vessels. And let's just discuss for a minute what are the functions of nitric oxide. One, it keeps all the cellular elements within our bloodstream flowing smoothly like Teflon rather than Velcro. It keeps things from getting sticky. Number two, nitric oxide is the strongest blood vessel dilator in the body. When you climb stairs, the arteries to your heart, to your legs, they widen, they dilate, that's nitric oxide. Number three, nitric oxide will protect the wall of the artery from becoming thick and stiff or inflamed, protect us from getting high blood pressure, and hypertension. Number four is the absolute key 
a safe and normal amount of nitric oxide will protect us all from ever developing any blockages or plaque. So literally everybody on the planet Earth who has heart disease, whether they're from London, Berlin, Chicago, New York, or Melville, if they have cardiovascular disease, it is because by now in the previous decades, they have so sufficiently trashed, injured, compromised, and turned their endothelial system into an absolute train wreck. They no longer have enough nitric oxide to protect themselves from making blockages or plaque. But the good news is this. This is not a malignancy. This is a completely benign foodborne illness. And once you can get patients to understand that never again are they to pass through their lips another morsel of food that is going to further injure an already train wrecked endothelium, then the endothelium begins to recover, makes enough nitric oxide so we can not only halt disease progression, but we often see elements of disease reversal. So now what are the fats or the foods that for our patients we eliminate because these are the foods that injure your endothelium, ready? One, any drop of oil, olive oil, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, coconut oil, palm oil, oil in a cracker, oil in a piece of bread, oil in a salad dressing. Oil injures endothelial cells, as does anything with a mother or a face. Meat, fish, chicken, fowl, turkey, eggs, and anything that is dairy, milk, cream, butter, cheese, ice cream, and yogurt, and don't like sugary foods, that is cakes, pies, cookies, stevia, agave, excesses of maple syrup, molasses, and honey. Don't like sugary drinks, diet colas, Pepsi, and Coke. You want to be sure to avoid nuts. That's peanuts, peanut butter, nut butters, cashew sauce, and avocado. Oh, I grant you avocado is delicious. But what we're doing for these patients is we're eliminating the foods that have saturated fats, and are able to injure endothelial cells. Finally, coffee with caffeine. Decaf, okay. Coffee with, a ca coffee with caffeine injures the endothelial cell. So that's pretty much uh, the, why we, and that's my answer to your question uh, about, uh, about fat. And what we've got to document that now is uh, really with several hundred patients who we've reported on and other, another thousand who have gone through our study uh, who, uh, who have not yet been reported. 